Thus, with the collective powers of the four pure forces, fire, water, air, nature, and the only impure force, the evil energy of chaos, the new world of Magnius was created. The history of Magnius is one of struggle and triumph, one of godly arcane power and the very mortal events. But before we can talk about the history of Magnius, we must speak of its geography to fully understand the world we find ourselves in. The northern parts of the world are mostly taiga in the regions of Sindrarian and Tis. Along with the taiga, it is tundra in the far north as you approach the North Pole and enter Morphanic lands. There are also several mountain ranges in the north. The Valdor Mountains, literally Mountain Mountains and Volcamon, are the largest mountain range and the ancestral homeland of the dwarves, which they are named after. Dwarves are sometimes called Valdorians for this reason. As you move south, you encounter the region of Arnesia, the land of many goats and romantic. Arnesia is much closer to the equator and is characterized by deserts and grasslands. Much of the reason is the rain shadow caused by the Abyssus Mountains that divide Arnesia and Sandraria. The mountains block rain and the cold northern winds from reaching down to Arnesia. On the continent of Morval, the mountain range known as the Kaikritori Mountains rise above the north shores. They are surrounded by lush jungle, where the Wood Elves, also known as the Green Elves, reside. South of the mountain live the Morse, a subrace of dwarves from an old fallen empire called Grass Dwarves or Hill Dwarves. The grasslands and open plains dominate this area, with rivers intersecting towns and villages. Moving east, atop to the island of Morak, stands Mount Morak, the highest mountain in Magnus standing at roughly 40,000 feet, or 12,192 meters. It was formed millions of years ago, when an undersea volcano rose to the surface and formed the island. Surrounding the mountain is lush jungle and mysterious groves that hold dark, arcane secrets. Farther east is the continent of Meridani. It is capped by the Great Bregvari Desert, the ancient homeland of the orcs. Bragvar is dotted with mountains and large dunes. The desert fades as you go south, giving way to grasslands and the occasional scorching forest. To the southwest is the nation of Ragovusi, a sprawling woodland that reaches to the southern coast. The handle of Meridani is capped with snow and alpine forests, but not much of the far south beyond it is mapped. The south seems to be mostly snow and ice. The first explorers around the handle seem to concur this, but tell of many islands possibly another continent below the world. Now talking about more general things. The world is known commonly as Magnius, meaning great or big in the Larcanian language. Magnius is the second planet in a single star solar system with 11 planets, most of which can be seen with the naked eye from Magnius. The planet has two moons, Luna and Selene. Selene is the larger moon and is often seen as more important or sacred. The sun, is called Solas, Sol, simply the sun. In the dead of night, the twin moons of Luna and Selene can be seen, as well as several planets. Constellations can be seen in the north, with some difference in the south. The constellations have been seen as marks of the gods for thousands of years, and have been venerated in many forms for nearly as long. In several ancient cultures, semi-scientific study of the stars was seen as holy, and priests spend many parts of their lives cataloging and examining the stars in this holy study. Being a pre-industrial society means the inhabitants of Magnus have little impact on the climate. Land has been cleared for cities, but large-scale infrastructure required for extensive deforestation or desertification is not in place, and won't be for at least a few hundred years. Certain places, like the previously mentioned Morak, have been enchanted with certain magical properties that change the environment ever so slightly. But high echelons of magic have not yet reached the point of being able to change fundamentals about the world. Speaking of fundamentals, all the fundamental forces from our world are in place, including the weak and strong nuclear force, magnetism, and gravity. There is an additional force in play as well, Magnesa, commonly called magic. Magnesa allows for the manipulation of the other four forces, can occur as a natural mutation in living beings that allows them to channel it and manipulate the four forces. The laws of nature are influenced by Magnusa, but not to a large degree. Only sentient species, the result of Magnusa itself, have the ability to use it in any conscious capacity. 
Many animals, like the ursine fugent, use Magnusa to enhance their senses and catch prey more easily. Dragons, in all their many types, also use Magnusa in a similar way, to sense prey and danger. Those are the basics about the world. In the next episode, we will talk about the peoples of Magnus, the sentient races that inhabit this grand world. If you enjoyed this video, then please consider liking and subscribing. Tell me if you like this format in the comments below, and may Sylvain bless you with warmth and comfort.